Hey guys, so some time ago I introduced you to a Firefox extension called NoScript which help you stay safe online by restricting the um, scripts that run on various websites. Uh, scripts can be used to compromise your browser security as well as often break a lot of functionality. I've been to a number of websites that have just failed to load properly because there is just too much going on in regards to JavaScripts behind the scenes of the particular web page in question. And I have noticed that by using NoScript on Firefox that my browsing experience is substantially sped up and uh, significantly more straightforward and easier to use, albeit you do actually have to, of course, navigate yourself around the internet in a slightly different way. I will, of course, link to that particular video down in the description below, but today I am going to be illustrating to you how you can stay safe using the Google Chrome browser uh, and how you can use that to control cookies and JavaScripts when it comes to browsing the internet using that. So, it's significantly uh, easier in a lot of ways to configure how JavaScript and cookies work because there is an inbuilt function on the browser. Now, the inbuilt function on the Chrome browser is a little bit more simpler, and some might say straightforward, more straightforward, and easier to use when it comes to determining what websites can and can't use scripts and cookies. Uh, so there is that particular benefit there. And in my recent Battle of the Browsers video, I did actually outline that one of the benefits of using Chrome is that there is uh, sort of integral tools to manage cookies and scripts. So uh, let's take a look at how we can control the uh, use of scripts and cookies uh, when we browse the internet using Chrome. So you just simply go to the uh, the configuration menu and go down to settings. Um, and uh, as you can see here, I've got my various uh, other profiles here. And I've set up a blank profile just to show you um, how to do that. So you just go down to the settings page and then go down to show advanced settings and then go to content settings. Now there is a lot of information and there's a lot of tools and configuration options in the contents settings. Um, so you might want to just take some time to explore all of the functions there, including do not show images. For example, if you're on a particularly slow internet connection, that might be something. It's less of a problem nowadays, but um, you never know, it might be something you might be interested in. But the two that we're going to be looking at today is cookies and JavaScript. Now by default, they allow local data to be set and uh, they allow all sites to run JavaScript. Now, the first thing that I encourage you guys to do is to block third-party cookies and data. You can also do this in Firefox. This is just basic common sense when it comes to browsing the internet. You don't want um, third parties looking in and, and basically having access to, to personal information without your consent. That's That, that to me, is, uh, is very much an issue of consent when it comes to protecting yourself online as well. There are certain websites I don't mind um, using cookies with. In fact, some sites you have to when it comes to things like shopping carts and websites that involve you having to log in. Uh, but that being said, uh, there are a lot of websites that want to keep tabs on you and data mining is a multi-million dollar industry these days. So uh, it is particularly important to at least keep yourself aware and allow yourself to be, um, you know, a consented party in these decisions. So uh, what I personally do, and these are my personal options, and I, I tend to be more overzealous than underzealous. Um, partly because I just have this philosophy of, of being better safe than sorry, is that I block cookies and JavaScript from setting any data. Now, this doesn't outright block it here and now. It just, um, that is the default option. So I'm going to do, click, go down to done, save that. Okay, so once we have our new cookies and JavaScript options set, uh, I'm going to now just demonstrate how these would come into play when it comes to your day-to-day -day browsing of the internet. And I'm going to start by going to the Project Chronicle website, projectchronicle.com. As you can see here, it's shortcutted in my uh, Google Start page. And it doesn't exactly uh, look like much once I started turning off the JavaScript and the cookies. In this particular instance, it's the JavaScript that is preventing me from viewing the website um, as I like. Now, this is a pretty common occurrence. This happens with not necessarily the majority of websites, but certainly uh, a noticeable portion of them. And this is about as easy as possible to overcome. All you have to do is go to the uh, two icons here. Now, the first icon here is uh, tells you that um, cookies were prevented from being stored. And this second icon here says that JavaScript was blocked from being executed on this page. Now, this uh, page in and of itself has some artwork that requires JavaScript to render properly, otherwise you just end up with a blank website here. So you can actually click on the icon here and you can uh, tell it to always allow JavaScript on projectchronicle.com and then click done. 
It's as simple as a refresh of the page. And there we go. This is our uh, Project Chronicle website, and um, it's loaded up pretty pretty fine there. Uh, and you have to do that with a lot of websites. After a while, you start building up a white list of websites that you don't, because that, that um, setting is then saved for the next time that you visit projectchronicle.com or whatever website you decided to whitelist. You've effectively just added the site that you're currently visiting onto a whitelist. Uh, with cookies, it tends to be that you need to whitelist sites that you log into. JavaScript, you can end up needing to whitelist just about any site that might require it to, to lay out um, the website itself correctly. Um, it is an extra step in the process of loading a website, but it is also making your browsing experience significantly safer. And once you do build up a, a library of sites that you can trust, it becomes a significantly smaller a process from then on in because you already you know, know you know what sites are safe and what sites are not safe but when you often visit websites that you might not visit very often um, then you know it is a, a bit of a precautionary measure so again it's entirely up to you how uh, precautious you want to be when it comes to uh, browsing the internet this is a a, um, a default setup for me I like to only allow JavaScript and cookies to be run and set with my permission but that's very much a me thing I like to have complete control over my web browser and my browsing experience some people would rather just skip out that process and, and, and browse the internet reasonably freely I can see why some people would prefer not to enable this additional step it is just something that you have to do and it's an additional thing that you have to do uh, in order to browse the internet reasonably safely but that being said a lot of companies rely on this minor inconvenience so that they can actually track your movements on the internet and, and effectively sell your data to third parties so um, I do like to have a list of websites that I trust and websites that I don't trust um, and uh, sort of allow those permissions accordingly uh, but again like I say that's just me I like to have full control over these kind of things so anyway guys I just thought I'd let you know uh, about those particular security options available in Chrome. They are inbuilt, so you don't have to install any add-ons, which is a benefit that it has over Firefox. Uh, it also means that then there's less chance of errors um, coming up in regards to um, add-ons and plugins, because as we all know, the number one cause of browser crashes is a faulty plugin. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.